Oh, hey there. Uh, I was just playing uh, one of my favorite Commodore 64 games, Jumpman Jr. So, what I want you to notice here is that Jumpman Jr. is at the very right edge of the screen now. now up until now, in my videos, uh, we haven't seen that. We have mo been moving sprites in this part of the screen, but not past somewhere around here. We have been using this area as a HUD, displaying scores, lives, whatever. So we haven't moved past this area here. So the question is, how can we do that? How can we make the sprite move over here? Let me show you how. Welcome back. So it's been a while. Uh, you know, I've been busy writing a book. Well, that's a bad excuse because I've been doing other things as well. Uh, but talking about the book, today I received the latest version. And I forgot to tell you last time that um, the book that I showed you in that video, uh, that was a prototype book. Now, it's basically the same as the finished book, but I did some tweaks on the cover. So this is the uh, this is the final version. Oh, it's transparent here. <laughs> okay, fine. But uh, uh, this is the final version. Now um, I'm a kind of OCD type person, so I noticed that I made the um, when I changed the cover. The text uh, was, was a little too far to the right, close to the edge. Now, I'm sorry about that. Uh, so I, I think this just uh, it, it has to be that way. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. But other than that, uh, the book looks uh, fine. Uh, the spine or the the uh, the uh, spiral coil here looks perfectly fine it's absolutely perfect on this new book also let me just show you quickly now this is the uh, notebook that you can order as an accessory and as i told you it's just a, a lined empty notebook to make notes so that's one thing now the other thing is uh, i've been trying for months to record video from my from uh, from an original physical Commodore 64 because I want to show you this I want to show you the official Commodore assembler so this is the official software from Commodore um, to write uh, assembly language so uh, I haven't, I have been having so many issues. I, I haven't been able to record a stable picture from a real Commodore 64. So I'm going to continue to try and hopefully we can get that video done very soon. But for now, we have another topic for today. We are going to talk about the extended x-axis of a sprite. So let's take a look at that. So let's just take a quick look at the, um, some default stuff here. Now this is sprite zero. The uh, memory address D1000, D000, that address keeps track of the x-axis of sprite zero. Right now the x-axis for sprite zero is 100. So I can move around here and you can see that the x-axis change. If I go all the way here to the left, let's see if I can do that. Yeah, around here. So when the sprite is uh, against the left edge, uh, the, the uh, x-axis is 24. I couldn't get it exactly to 24 here. There we go. So when the sprite is against the left edge, the x-axis or the, the, the uh, 
x coordinate for sprite 0 here is 24. If I move it further to the left, it goes off screen or it goes behind the border. So if we set the x axis to 0, uh, yeah, if we set it to 0, it goes off screen, it, it becomes invisible. And if I continue, then I go over to this side of the screen because if I go all the way over here to address 255 or coordinate 255, that's the furthest I can go now. Because a memory address can only hold a byte. And a byte, as you know, is 250. Or the maximum number a byte can be is 255. So if we go past that, then we just wrap around to the other side of the screen to zero and we continue on from there. But you noticed that Jumpman Jr. He could move over here. So of course there is a way to do that on the Commodore 64. So we have to be able to move past this 255 limit. So let's do some quick repetition here. The Commodore 64 screen or at least the uh, background area here is 200, uh, 200 pixels tall. And it's 320 pixels wide. Now this is the problem. Because we can't put a number like 320 into a byte. It doesn't work because it's way over 255. So if we want to move a sprite over here, we can't say that we want the X axis to be 300. It doesn't work because we just can't do it that way. So this is the problem. But yeah, and also let's just remember that uh, this sprite uh, exposition starts here at 24 in D thousand for sprite zero. Okay. Anyway, um, we have something called memory address D thousand and ten. Now D thousand and ten. That memory address keeps track over what sprite is over that 255 pixel border. So by using this memory address, we can actually continue moving the sprites over to the right edge of the screen. But at the exact moment that the sprite is at uh, memory or at X position 255 then we need to flip a switch for that sprite. Meaning in memory address, oh, this is not correct. It should be D1010, sorry about that. D1010 is what we're talking about now. Uh, so uh, what happens in memory address D1010 uh, is that each of the bits in D1010 is a, a switch for a sprite. So zero, if it's set to zero, then the sprite is moving on the normal part of the screen or the, the left part of the screen. But if it's set to one here, then it means that the sprite is over at the far right side of the screen. So in this case, remember, this is not correct. It should be D1010. Again, sorry about that. But here, in D1010, I've set a 1 here. Now this is the position for sprite 0. So we have sprite 0, sprite 1, sprite 2, sprite 3, and so on. So every bit in there is for one of the sprites. So here I said sprite 0, uh, I've said that sprite 0 is on the extended x axis. So it's over there on the right side of the screen in D1010. So, which means that we have moved across this 255 uh, border, moved over here. So to do that, we need to set a one for what sprite we want to, to be there. So here, my sprite 
this sprite zero. Here he's at x x uh, uh, x coordinate 198. No problem. And here you can see in address D1010, all of the sprites are set to zero. None of the sprites are over here. So that's no problem. But here I have moved sprite zero over to that part of the screen. And now we can see there's a one here for sprite zero in D1010. So there's a one here for spread zero in D1010, which means that spread zero is across the 255 pixel border limit. And also notice that we have reset the X axis in memory address D, D1000. Because at the moment you pass this 255 limit, the X, um, coordinate goes back to zero so we need to combine that with setting a one for this sprite in d1010 so we need to set a one there and d1000 needs to go back to zero or it will go back to zero so here the x coordinate for sprite zero is 29 because we start counting from zero again from here so that's the uh, that's the way this works. So let me just show you that uh, how it works uh, on a real Commodore 64, or at least in an emulator. Okay, so here I have this sprite sprite zero again, and you, as you can see, I'm moving it around here, this part of the screen. Right now, the X position is 173. And of course, since we're on this part of the screen, it's set to zero here in D1010. But what if I continue to the right now? No problem. The sprite moved smoothly over to that part of the screen. So that's no problem. You can move back and forth like this, no problem. But notice here in address D1010, for sprite zero. The moment I pass this border, I need to set it, this bit to zero. There, I set it to zero. And now if I move the other way, I need to set that bit to one. There, I set it to one. Also notice that the uh, X coordinate reset. So here I'm moving all the way over here, 251, so we're almost there. And the moment I pass 255, the X coordinate goes back to zero, and I set a one for sprite zero in D1010. So, um, that's how, uh, how, uh, how this works. That's how we can get the sprite all the way across there on the right part of the screen. So let's take a quick look at the code for that, or at least a very simple example. Okay, so here is my subroutine for reading the joystick. Now this is a very simple test game, so I'm just reading the joystick and I'm moving the sprite. So here I check, uh, am I uh, holding the, uh, pushing the joystick up? Well, if I am, then I decrease the, uh, the value in the, the Y position. And if I hold the joystick down, then I increase the Y position. So that's easy. But when we're moving left and right, and we want to be able to move on the right side of the screen, then we need to remember this D1010 memory address. So like I did up here, I'm checking the joystick direction. And let's say that I'm holding left. Okay, so I'm holding left. Now, the first thing I do in here is check memory address D1010. And I check the bit for sprite zero, 
Now, like I said, this is a very simple example and I'm only working with bright zero here. So here I'm checking the bit for spread zero in D1010. If that bit is zero, then I just forget about it and I just move left. Because uh, if I'm already on the left side part of the screen, then I just move left. I don't need to think about anything else. But if I'm over there on the right side of the screen, the extended area, then I need to say, um, so that means that there's a one here. Let's say there's a one here for sprite zero. If it is, then I, I check, okay, check the uh, X position for sprite zero. In memory address D1000. Is it zero? Because if it's zero, that means we are right there at the border. So if it's zero, then while we're moving left, then I need to set that. Uh, yeah, if the X position is zero. But in D1010, the bit is set to one. Uh, so this is really the critical part, right? So we need to set that bit to zero as we cross that border over to the left. Because we're, we're uh, crossing the border, we're moving to the left part of the screen. So we need to set that bit to zero in D1010. And after that, I just move a pixel further to the left, which means that now he will be at X position 255. And when I'm moving right, it's kind of the same thing. So here I'm, uh, am I moving right? Yes, okay. Then I check the position of the sprite. Uh, am I, uh, the X position, am I at X position 255? Well, if I'm uh, not at uh, X position 255, then I just increase the X position one pixel to the right. No problem. But if I am at X position 255, then I need to set the bit to one for sprite zero because I'm moving across that border. And then I just continue on down here and I increase the uh, X position by one, which will make the 255 roll over to zero. So I'm at the first position of the right part of the screen. The bit has been set to one and the X position is back to zero. So it's a little complicated to explain this, but um, Hopefully you can see how this works. Uh, so this is basically the reason I didn't include it in the previous videos, because it adds a little bit of extra complexity, especially when you're making a full game. But now that you know about this, now you can uh, include this in a game if you want your sprite to be able to move over there. Just remember, this memory address D1010 because that's the one that keeps track of if the sprite is over here or not. So that's it. That's it for this video. Now, like I said, hopefully I can record my physical Commodore 64 very soon. But for now, have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.